Hello students, a very, very warm welcome. The topic for today's discussion is cultivation of crops. Now, today we will be talking about five different economically important, rather you can say commercially important crops. We will be talking about jute, cotton, rice, wheat, and rubber. You all are familiar with this, right? At some point of your life, you, you must have heard about jute, cotton, rice, wheat, and rubber just goes without saying you, you consume rice, you consume wheat, and you use rubber all the while. Cotton also, isn't it? The dresses that you wear, jutes, the bags that you use in your day-to-day -day life. So these are extremely important crops for our life sustenance. Okay. Now see, if we talk about the various crops of India, what do we get? It can largely be divided into food crop and cash crops, right? Food crops are cereals, pulses, and spices, okay? You have cereals which include rice, wheat, barley, maize, joar, bajra, ragi, all these. We consume it as our staple food, isn't it? Uh, then pulses include the most important, the one common term for pulses is, you know, the dal that you consume, dal, right? It can be gram, it can be two dal, it can be masoor, moong, whatever, arhar, anything, fine. Those come under the subhead pulses and then you have spices. Indians are known for using different types of spice and condiments, isn't it? Spices include what? Cardamom, right? Cardamom means what? Elaichi, the big one that is a black cardamom, bada elaichi, or the green cardamom or chota elaichi. Then you have pepper, green chilies, uh, chilies or I mean this, Chili and spices are the dried ones, the red dried ones. Then you have ginger, many other, star anise, uh, what is that called? Maize, nutmeg, then cinnamon, all these are common spices. Fine. Now coming to cash crops. Cash crops means what? These are consumed, these are a part of these crops are consumed and they are also used for marketing purpose. Fine. This includes oil seeds. Oil seed means what? See? Groundnut, sesam, mustard, linseed, castor, coconut. From all these, you see oil is extracted. You have brown nut oil, you have mustard oil, castor oil, coconut oil, linseed oil, sesame oil, many others are also there. Almond oil, right. Next we'll talk about the fibers. Cotton, jute, silk. These are popular fibers that are used for making fabrics or dress material. Then we come to plantation crops. This includes tea, coffee, rubber. Okay. Other crops, this category includes crops which do not fall in these categories. What are they? Tobacco, sugarcane, all these. Fine. Now, Let's start our discussion with 
price. Fine. So we will start our crop discussion with rice. The cropping season can be categorized into three types on the basis of sowing time and harvesting time. The Kharif crops, okay? The Kharif crops are sown in the month of May to June. In these two months, the hot summer, May and June. This is harvested in the month of September and October. Okay, next coming to Rabi. These are sown in the month of June, July hmm. and are harvested in the month of November, December. Okay, then coming to summer or spring spring summer season or spring season uh, crops they are sown in the month of november december and are harvested in the month of march april that means at the point of commencement of summer generally it is harvested during the spring time hmm. this line is very very important please take a note Rice is a tropical crop. It grows best in the tropics or in the countries that fall in the tropical region. These are the various requirements for growing rice. What type of temperature is required? Let's take a note of this. Average temperature during growing season should be between 20 degrees Celsius to 27 degrees Celsius. This should not always remember the temperature shouldn't fall below 15. 15 degrees Celsius, it should not fall below 16. Please keep this in mind. Should in no way fall below 50, okay? And abundant sunshine is a prerequisite. A lot of sun, uh, sunshine is required. Please remember, a lot of sun, sunshine is required. It cannot grow in shady, uh, in, in shady places, where light is inadequate. Next coming to rainfall. Average annual rainfall should be somewhere between 175 to 300 centimeters. Okay. It should somewhere range between 175 to 300 centimeter. The minimum being how much? See? Minimum being 115 centimeter. Anything less than this won't serve the purpose. So, 115 centimeter of rainfall is a must. Although the regions are although, you know, the regions that have this are most suitable. Paddy needs flooded ankle deep water. that are having these conditions, these conditions are most suitable. Hmm. Now, Paddy needs ankle deep water. You must have seen in different uh, 
documentaries or in uh, discovery channel national geography channel where, where they show cultivation of rice you must have seen over there these uh, are extremely these are extremely important these features are extremely important you know rice cannot grow until and unless there is ankle deep water the depth of though the depth of the water vary over 25 mm at the time of transplanting to as much as 150 mm for 10 weeks of growing period okay the depth might vary but there should be an ankle deep water see this is ankle deep water how how much of water is required correct now let's talk a little about the different types of soil fertile riverine alluvial soil is the best for rice cultivation what is best let's see fertile riverine alluvial soil is the best for rice cultivation okay podzolic alluvium impermeable heavy clay clay loam soil in monsoon land is considered in monsoon take a note of the words clay loam soil in the in monsoon land is considered to be the best for rice cultivation as water retention capacity of the soil is very very high can you name a type of soil where uh, water retention capacity is very low it is sandy soil where water retention capacity is extremely low why is it low because it is porous in nature the water percolates very fast so it cannot retain the water and for growing rice for cultivating rice this is a prerequisite you cannot you just cannot do without it you need plenty of water so for this purpose you will have to have a you will have to have that type of a soil which has the capacity to retain moisture okay clay loam soil in monsoon land is considered to be the best for rice cultivation because of its very efficient water retention capacity okay rice is also grown in saline areas of delta region don't think it is not grown elsewhere it is also grown in deltic regions alluvial deltas and river basins are ideal for rice cultivation right rice cultivation needs high fertilizer application this uh, like this cultivation cannot be executed cannot be operated without the application of fertilizers so application of fertilizers is a must right now let's take a look at what type of fertilizers are required paddy requires three essential plant nutrients what are they those are let's see what are they those are nitrogen phosphorus and potassium nitrogen phosphorus and potassium are extremely important most paddy lands have a moderate quantity of such nutrients but in case they are deficient you cannot always say that yes the soil is having a lot of nutrient it can run short of it isn't it so in case they are deficient organic manure or artificial fertilizers have to be used right in case they are deficient in that case what will you do apply fertilizers i mean you will have to apply artificial nutrients right now this is something indispensable actually this is not only for rice for any type of commercialized cultivation this is an utmost important factor 
without labor nothing can be done paddy cultivation is extremely labor intensive therefore it requires more labor in comparison to other cereal crops other cereal crops also require labor but not as much as paddy paddy requires intense labor intense labor okay labor is necessary for preparing the field weeding what is weeding so you are applying nutrients the soil quality is good so there are chances plenty of weeds will grow and if weeds are growing what will happen they will uh, they will derive all nutrients from the soil right so there will be nothing left for the main cereal to grow clear that is the very reason why weeds have to be cleared off hmm. so people are required or laborers are required for preparing the field weeding sowing transplanting manuring harvesting threshing winnowing and milling right from the beginning till the end labors are indispensable without labor nothing can be done now for rice cultivation large number of cheap labor is required see um when you are into a business venture right when you are into a business venture what happens then you are always trying to make money make profit you are not into a business to incur losses right so always at the back of your mind this thought is there that it should be profit oriented that is the reason why huge number of cheap labor is required okay now we'll talk about jute the see you you will understand as we move through these topics you will understand the basic format is same you are required to know the climatic conditions rainfall temperature and uh certain growth conditions along with the soil so the basic format is same right okay let's come back jute requires a hot humid climate the temperature fluctuation between 24 degrees celsius and 37 degrees celsius so the range is from 24 degree celsius to 37 degree celsius hmm. however the optimum being around 34 degree c okay the optimum being 34 degree c it shouldn't be here it should be here 34 degree celsius there should not be constant rain or water locked conditions which are harmful for jute cultivation yes let's highlight this there should not be constant rain or water locked condition where do you require water locked condition we have just discussed this water lock condition is a prerequisite for rice cultivation correct it is a prerequisite for rice cultivation and not and not for root there should not be please take a note of this word 
ए शुड नॉट बी कॉन्स्टेंट रेन और वॉटर लॉक कंडीशन विच आर हार्मुल विच आर हार्मुल फॉर जूट कल्टिवेशन नाउ इन द सीडलिंग स्टेज वॉटर लॉगिंग इज नॉट एडवाइज एट ऑल वेन द जूट इज इन अ सीडलिंग कंडीशन एट दैट टाइम नो वॉटर लॉगिंग शुड बी देर alternate sunshine and rainy days are most helpful to jute so what is the most helpful or most friendly condition alternate sunshine and rainy days alternate sunshine and rainy days are most 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 important right yes now see now we'll talk about the best month for jute cultivation and the processing of jute jute is generally sown in february on lowlands and in march to may on uplands very important it is sown in feb in february where is it sown in feb it is sown in lowlands fine but in march april may june this time march april may in these three months it is done in the uplands fine the jute crop takes around 8 to 10 months to mature so its maturation time is how much how long does it uh, does it actually take to mature it takes around 8 to 10 months to mature fine however different varieties take different time to mature the harvesting period generally starts in july and it spills over to october so it continues from july to october all right now coming to the soil condition what type of soil is required the best recommended soil type the best recommended soil type for jute cultivation is gray alluvial soil new new gray alluvial soil of good depth okay what is recommended new gray alluvial soil of good depth all right receiving silt from the annual floods it should receive a lot of silt silt is very important for jute cultivation okay so it should have a lot of silt and from where it will it will receive this from annual floods jute is largely grown in sandy loams and clay loams fine from where is it grown it is largely grown in sandy loams and clay loams varying clays are unsuitable for jute cultivation in other words what you can say jute requires a clean clod free field with fine tilth okay what is the meaning of the word t i l t h can anyone say what is the meaning of this word it is the state of being tilted it is especially prepared for crop culture okay you just you you make a tilted land like this this is the meaning the land is plowed cross plowed and planked many times so repeated plowing is required fine repeated plowing and cross plowing plowing and cross plowing plowing and cross plowing is required all weeds must be thoroughly removed this is this condition c this condition we have already talked about before isn't it 
Haven't we talked about this? We have already talked about this one. Weeds must be removed thoroughly. We have talked about this in rice also. Weeds must be removed thoroughly. Right? Now we'll talk about water management. Okay? Then we'll talk about water management. How is it done? Water management. Jute crop requires 500 millimeter of water. How much? How much is required? 500 millimeters of water. Right? First, irrigation is to be given after sowing and life irrigation on fourth day after sowing. Please see, don't get confused while memorizing these conditions. Write them over and over. The more you write, the better it is. Take one crop or two crops at a time. Do not sit with everything at the preparatory phase. Sit with two crops at a time. Try to write down all the important features to it. All the features that you have learned. Categorize them. Don't write Rama and Mahabharata. Don't make a long flow. All right. You categorize them like temperature, soil condition, this, that. You categorize them. And then you write, clear? After irrigation can be given once afterwards, like after this is done, like first irrigation at the time of sowing, life irrigation on the fourth day after sowing, what can, uh, what can be done afterwards? Irrigation can be given once in every 15 days. So time management is also very important. You should know when to give and what to give. Yes, this is how we complete our jute cultivation. See, we are not discussing the economic importances in this chapter. And see, it is needless saying, you know what are the actual importances, you know. So it, it goes without saying, it is needless saying, what are the importances this that this part you know fine next we'll talk about cultivation of cotton yes see the format is again the same cotton is the crop of tropical and subtropical areas it requires uniformly high temperature see there, there shouldn't be any fluctuation like one day very high then the other day again it is less it shouldn't be going up and down like this it should be uniformly high varying between 21 degrees celsius to 30 degrees celsius hmm? so cotton is the crop of tropical and subtropical areas which requires uniformly high temperature the range being 21 to 30 degree celsius the growth of cotton is retarded when the temperature when the temperature falls below 20 degree celsius so this is an important point to be kept in mind what is this the temperature should not fall below 20 degree celsius and frost frost is the enemy of cotton if it is having frost then cotton cannot grow in that region enemy enemy number one this is enemy number one of cotton plant and it is grown in areas having at least 210 frost free days in a year okay frost free days are very important if it is having frost all the time then 
it is very important for the cultivars to grow these type of crops okay now coming to rainfall the modest requirement of water can be met by an average annual rainfall of 50 to 100 cm however it is uh, successfully grown in areas of lesser rainfall with the help of irrigation where there is uh, lesser rainfall you know in those regions where there is lesser rainfall in those regions cotton can also be grown but in that case what will happen you will have to have a ready ready source of irrigation about one third of the total area under cotton cultivation is irrigated right in the year 1988-89 an area of 2477 lakh hectares out of total 73 point this will actually be uh, wait a while The decimal hasn't come over here. Right. In the year 1988-89, see, 24.77 lakh hectares out of a total of uh, 73 point Four three lakh hectares. That is approximately you can say thirty four percent, isn't it? Thirty three point seven three percent of the total area under cotton was irrigated. Hmm. Cotton. Cotton is a kharif crop, hmm. which requires six to eight months to mature remember cotton is a kharif crop it's not a rabi crop it's a kharif crop all right it's a kharif crop and requires six to eight months to mature its time of sowing and harvesting differs time of sowing and harvesting differs in different parts of the country depending upon the climatic condition in punjab haryana this region it is sown in the month of april and may and is harvested in the month of december january that is before the winter frost can damage the crop you must have remembered that i have just talked about this particular topic Frost is enemy number one. What did I say? Frost is a prominent enemy if you are planning to cultivate cotton. In the peninsular part of India, it is sown up to October and harvested between January and May. Hmm because there is no danger of winter frost see in the northern part of our country there is a chance of frost but when you are traveling to the peninsular region that is the southern part of our country southern part of india there the chances of frost is not there isn't it so there are uh, the chances of damage is also less okay it 
in the peninsula part of india it is sown up to october and harvested between january and may because there is no danger of winter frost in these areas in tamil nadu it is grown both as kharif and as a rabi crop hmm it is generally a kharif crop but in tamil nadu it is grown both as kharif and as rabi crop okay next c cotton cultivation is closely related to deep black soil which is known as regur soil hmm black soil is very important for growth of cotton black soil this is found in deccan plateau malwa plateau regions and in gujarat you must have heard isn't it surat is very famous for cotton textile the the, the different provinces of gujarat amdavad all these places are very famous for what very very famous for growing cotton isn't it now see it also grows well in alluvial soils of satluj ganga plain and red and laterite soils of the peninsular region okay it also grows in alluvial soils of satluj ganga plain where is satluj ganga plain in the northern region isn't it satluj ganga plain means what in the source near to not exactly the source in the upper course of ganga hmm in the northern region and red and laterite soils of peninsular region peninsular region have this type of soil red lateritic soil hmm cotton quickly exhausts the fertility of the soil that means what it uses up the nutrients very fast the soil becomes quickly exhausted therefore regular application of manures and fertilizers to the soil is very necessary it's very necessary right now we'll talk about the moment we hear about wheat what comes to our mind punjab wheat is a rabi crop and is mostly grown in the subtropical and temperate regions fine wheat needs cool and moist climate at the time of sowing and growing and a dry and warm climate at the time of ripening right the sudden rise in temperature at the time of ripening is very harmful okay the temperature should be low about 10 to 15 degree celsius please note that is the reason why i told you do not get confused for five different crops you have five different ranges of temperature so you will have to be very cautious you shouldn't get confused at all it should be low about how much 10 to 15 degree celsius at the time of sowing and at the at the harvesting time the temperature should be about 25 degree celsius to 30 degree celsius okay wheat grows well in those areas where the average rainfall average annual rainfall is less than 100 cm in areas of very low rainfall irrigation is a must irrigation is indispensable it's extremely necessary otherwise how will those regions be watered hmm light showers during the winter season can produce a bumper harvest it's very important it can produce a bumper harvest the iso heights of 100 cm marks a boundary between wheat growing areas on one hand and the rice growing areas on the other okay prolonged droughts at the time of maturity is not at all except 
respected or appreciated. It's very, very harmful. All right. Okay, so. There should be no frost at the flowering time and no hailstorm. No hailstorm at the time of ripening as they can cause heavy damage to the crop. Okay. Frost and hail both are not at all, you know, not at all expected for this very harmful. Hmm. Wheat can be grown in a variety of soils, but the well-drained fertile silt and clay loams are best suited for wheat cultivation. Right? So what is best suited for wheat cultivation? Which type? Fertile, uh, well-drained. Well-drained fertile silt and clay loams are best suited for wheat cultivation. It grows well in the black soil of Deccan Plateau. Black soil of Deccan Plateau means what? Once again, what is that? The peninsular region. Hmm. The peninsular region, right? Wheat, see, wheat is generally cultivated in flat and level areas where machines can be used easily. See, if it is undulated, if it like ups and downs are there, how will a tractor run? How will a machine run on that? So level plane is very uh, much, it's a prerequisite, you can say, flat or leveled areas. Wheat is generally cultivated in flat and level areas where machines can be used easily. The farming is extensive type and highly mechanized. Wheat needs a growing season of about 120 days. See, I have a suggestion. What you can do is, see, you have five crops over here. You make columns for five of them. The topics like uh, the, col the, there should be five columns for these five crops. Okay, I can just show you at the end of the lecture, what am I actually trying to say? That tabular representation will definitely help you learn faster. Hmm. Okay, now let's first come back to this. Wheat needs a growing season of about 120 days, but in some parts, new dwarf and drought resistant varieties can mature and be harvested in about 90 days. Uh, I would request all of you to please uh, ignore the background noise, okay? Now coming to geographical uh, conditions for growth, it is a crop of temperate climate. The ideal temperature for cultivation, for its cultivation is about 15 to 20 degrees Celsius. Please take a note, 15 to 20 degrees Celsius and requires a moderate amount of rainfall of 25 to 75 centimeters. Okay, it can be grown in drier areas with the help of irrigation, fine. Well-drained loamy and clay soils are ideal. Important producing areas are what? Wheat is cultivated on about 14% of the total arable area of the country. Okay. There are two important wheat producing zones. Which two? This is very, very important. Which are the two regions? the Ganga Satlej Plains in the Northwest and the Black Soil region in the Deccan. That means what? One in the North and one in the South. In the Northern region, Northern part of India, it is Ganga Satlej Plain. And in the Peninsular region, what is that? It is the Deccan Plateau region. Is that clear? 
In North India, wheat is sown in October, November and harvested in March, April. In Southern India, it is sown in September, October and harvested in December, January. Wheat takes lesser time in ripening in South India than in North India because of the climatic blessings. You can say it is hotter in Southern part of the country than in the Northern region, isn't it? That is the very reason, that is the very re uh, reason why it is uh, the ripening period shortens in southern part of the country in comparison to that in the northern part of the country. Fine. Uttar Pradesh being the highest producer, then we have Punjab, highest yield per hectare, Madhya Pradesh, Haryana, Gujarat, Maharashtra, West Bengal, and Uttarakhand are very famous for wheat cultivation and production. Now let's learn the names of some of the important varieties just for the sake of knowledge, that's all. Sonalika, Kalyana, Sona, Sabarmati, Lerma, Rozo, Hira, Shera, Sonara 64, Finally, we come to the last crop of today's discussion. See, before we go to this, I, I was just talking up, I was trying to tell you something like this. You just make a table. Hmm. See, note what I'm doing. You will have a table like this. Okay. Make five columns. Not five. Six columns like this you make. Fine. Here you will make condition and here the names. Rice, wheat, cotton, jute, rubber. Okay, here you will write temperature, rainfall, soil, all these you will write and you will write the different types. This is how you will remember it very nicely. Right? Okay, now let's talk about rubber. In general, rubber is a tropical tree. Fine. This explains why the leading natural rubber producers are Thailand, Malaysia, India, Brazil, and some African countries. See, these are all tropical countries, isn't it? Either it falls in the region of Tropic of Cancer or in the region of Tropic of Capricorn. Okay. In general, it requires high temperature throughout the year between 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. See, 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. In some cases, that is younger trees, rubber trees can withstand low temperature of about 15 degrees Celsius, but that for that is for a short period of time. Okay. An average rainfall of above 20 centimeter is necessary for the latex tree cultivation. The latex is the main important thing over here, isn't it? So, rainfall of about 300 centimeter might cause some kind of leaf diseases. Very important. See, all these crops must be free of diseases. Hmm. Rainfall should be distributed uniformly throughout the year. High humidity of 60 to 80% is beneficial for rubber tree cultivation. Very important. Here, you can find the optimum climatic conditions for rubber tree cultivation in India recommended by Rubber Board of India after carrying out several research. Right? 
Now let's take a note of the rainfall here. 2000 to 3000 millimeter of rainfall, which is evenly distributed without any marked dry reason and with 125 to 150 rainy days per annum. Very, very, very important. Okay. Maximum temperature of about 29 degrees Celsius to 34 degrees Celsius and minimum of about 20 degrees Celsius or more with a monthly mean of 25 to 28 degree Celsius. Please take a note, maximum temperature of about 29 degrees Celsius. See, 29 degrees Celsius to 34 degrees Celsius and minimum of about 20 degrees Celsius or more with a monthly mean of 25 to 28 degrees Celsius, okay? High atmospheric humidity of the order of 80%, fine. Bright sun, uh, sunshine amounting to about 2000 R per annum at the rate of six hours per day through all the months. See how well calculated they are. And last point, very important point, absence of strong winds. Okay, strong winds should be avoided. Temperature C, it is a tree of tropical forest. We have talked about this just a while ago. Requires constant high temperature above 25 degrees Celsius. Thus, the rubber tree cannot be grown at high altitude. At higher altitudes, the temperature will not be high, right? Rainfall, it needs heavy and well-distributed rainfall throughout the year and the plant needs rainfall more than 200 centimeters, fine. Soil, the plant requires alluvial or laterite soil, okay? Areas of production, India ranks fifth. India ranks fifth among the world's natural rubber producers. The state of Kerala is the largest producer of rubber in India. Please note, Kerala is the largest producer of rubber in India. Kerala accounts for about 91% of the total area under rubber plantation. Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, including the Garo Hills of Himalayas, are other producers. See, look at this picture. This is how latex is collected. Okay. So, thank you so much for attending this lecture. If you have any confusion, any doubts anywhere, please feel free to get back to me. I'll try my level best to solve it out for you. See you soon in the next class. Goodbye and have a nice day. Thank you.